This is exciting. Um, the city of Detroit earning its Heart Safe Community designation. What does that mean? We're learning about it today. It's a pretty big deal. And how can you be prepared in an emergency? We have Executive Fire Commissioner Chuck Sims here and Captain Jeff Forbes from the Detroit Fire Department, both here. Uh, we also have this poor uh, person down here. What do we call our dummy here? Uh, it's a CPR mannequin. CPR mannequin. We don't okay. call them dummies anymore. No, we oh. don't. No, I'm just kidding. I don't <laughs> know if we do or not. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if we do or not. You, got a name, you know? <laughs> All right, let's just talk about this designation. Explain what this means. Heart Safe City. Yes. Pretty big deal, uh, especially for a city our size. Absolutely. It's a remarkable achievement for the city of Detroit, Detroit Fire Department. And basically, it's uh, uh, satisfying 13 requirements. And once you satisfy those, you will receive the designation. But the biggest thing is that we're the largest municipality in the United States to receive that. And what are, you don't have to list all 13, but what are some of the requirements to get this designation? So the ones we're really focusing on is number one, teaching the community hands only CPR. Okay. AED placement mm. and training, um, teaching our 911 operators how to uh, uh, train bystander CPR while right. I'm saying. Mm. So those are the ones we're focusing on and we yeah. were able to achieve those last year. Uh, about a year and a half ago, we decided, hey, let's move forward. Let's make sure we get this designation for the city of Detroit and the Detroit residents. That's awesome. And for what yeah. you guys see, uh, you know, on the ground, how likely is it as first responders, when you go uh, somewhere where somebody has gotten CPR uh, compared to somebody that maybe hasn't gotten CPR, how, how much of an improved chance that they have at living or making it? So even with our great response times right now, the best chance of survival of somebody in a cardiac arrest is getting bystander CPR. Mm -hmm. And that's why this designation is so important, getting citizens trained getting visitors trained in the city because if somebody collapses um, and they have no CPR, no bystander CPR, and it's seven, seven and a half minutes till we get there, that's been seven to seven and a half minutes without the body perfusing. Yeah, wow. So Kevin, you wanna show us just, uh, you wanna do a quick demo and, yeah. and show us what we need to do? Yeah, so in um, and the event- And we have the, the dummy on the floor because you do need to go in with some serious pressure. Yeah, you want the person on a firm, flat surface. Uh, an area like a mattress or anything else is not good because you're not actually able to press the, uh, the heart enough to start perfusion. So in the event you think someone's in cardiac arrest, they've collapsed, they don't have a pulse, they're not breathing, what you wanna do is kneel next to them, you're gonna take the heel of your dominant hand, you're gonna interlace your fingers with your non-dominant hand, and you are gonna press hard and fast in the center of the chest. You wanna do a rate of about 100 to 120 per minute. Are you on the breastbone, below the breastbone, where, like? So it? right in the center of the breastbone, right in the middle of the chest. Okay. That way you're actually pushing and starting to perfuse the heart. And if you uh, break ribs, which is unfortunate, but that's okay, because the goal is to just to keep that blood flowing to the brain, right? Yeah, and that's been one of the, um, one of the issues with, with a lot of CPR is people being afraid to do it. Yeah. Yes. They're afraid yeah. of, of getting sued, Good Samaritan laws. We have to understand without CPR, their chance of survival is slim to none. I'm glad you mentioned that because I do think a lot of people consider Absolutely. that in choosing whether or not to help somebody or not. Yeah, in the state of Michigan, you are protected by Good Samaritan laws if you do provide CPR to somebody. It's a really important point. Mm, yeah. And they did add AED usage as well mm. for that Good Samaritan Let's talk about AEDs real quick. So these uh, automated external defibrillators, those can be truly lifesavers. Um, getting them in place in public places, I know has been a concern nationwide. How do we know if we're in a building and there is an AED uh, within the city of Detroit? So number one, if you're in a building, it should be a marker to show that this is where the AED is, but there's an app, it's called Pulse Point, and if you click on that app, it will show you all the AEDs that's mm. there to nearby. And so I, I do wanna say, last year about this time, we had eight registered AEDs in the city of Detroit, and as of today, we have over 500. Oh my gosh, that's and just amazing. When you talk about AED and the importance of that, I think that was highlighted a couple of years ago when DeMar Hamlin was on the field uh, for the Buffalo Bills and on a Monday night football game, AED, uh, you know, kit there helping. Shocking. Yeah, so absolutely, the importance of that quickness. If I may, one of the things that I didn't notice, um, you did not do mouth to mouth there. No, is so that, the with hands only CPR, we're removing mouth to mouth. Okay. The main thing is, is just getting that blood perfusing. Um, and that was another problem that people had. They were afraid to do CPR. They want to put their lips on somebody else's mm -hmm. lips. 
um, just getting perfusing, doing hands-only CPR, do not stop mm -hmm. until professional rescuers arrive. All right, it's good advice. Um, well done. That's a, it's a big you. achievement, and we look forward to hearing more about statistically what, what a difference this can make. Uh, more CPR training, more AEDs, saving more lives, because we know that with cardiac arrest, it's a matter of minutes, really. Every yeah. second counts. All right, good stuff. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Derek? A romantic comedy and musical.